Hi everybody, uh, my name is Rachel Connolly. I'm the Presidio County Biologist, so I'm not too close, but I'm not too far away. So uh, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit today about preventing human bear conflicts around your home. Uh, as Dana and Krista already talked about, there are bears currently recolonizing Texas. And as these bears are searching for new habitats, they're searching for more food, they're searching for new areas to recolonize, they're going to be coming more in contact with human dominated landscapes. So in the past couple of years, there's been a handful of incidences of bears being in uh, human dominated landscapes like Alpine, Fort Davis, Sanderson, uh, and even Del Rio. A lot of times these incidences can be handled by Texas Parks and Wildlife when we have all the appropriate knowledge and information that we need to make the right decisions for those animals. So when bears show up in Alpine, Sanderson, Fort Davis, a lot of times we can show up and haze them and scare them out of town without any problems. Unfortunately though, sometimes bears will end up in a much more chaotic situation as we saw in Del Rio last year, which uh, re actually resulted in the killing of a female bear that had a cub. That's not something that Texas Parks and Wildlife wants to happen. That's not something that the people of Del Rio want to happen. So it's important now, before bears become more prevalent in our communities, it's important to get a grasp on the steps we need to take to prevent bears from, from becoming habituated to human environments and getting into issues. So bears, you can think of them essentially as 300 pound raccoons. Anything that a raccoon is going to want to get into, a black bear is going to want to get into. This is a list of common attractants that people may have around their house that black bears are very, very interested in. So things like domestic fruit, you know, if you have like berry bushes or apple trees or peach trees near your house, those are going to smell really, really great and they're going to be a really tasty opportunity for black bears. Uh, also, if you have unsecured garbage, that's also an excellent thing for black bears to come and pick up, as we saw here in Terlingua. Also things like pet food, uh, compost, and unsecured barbecue pits or like outdoor kitchens. Those are all things that black bears are going to come looking for when they're in uh, human-dominated environments. And these are also things that we can take steps to secure to prevent bears from becoming habituated to using. So as Dana touched on in her presentation, black bear behavior follows this ladder of progress progression. And so it all starts by bears making contact with human, human uh, types of food, foods around human environments. So the first time that the bear gets some kind of food reward in a human dominated environment, that's their, their first positive association with humans. So they start to learn that, well, if I can just show up on this guy's porch and eat a whole bag of dog food, nobody really did anything about it. I'll just come back tomorrow and try the same thing. So as the bear gets used to receiving repeated food rewards from a human dominated environment with no negative consequences, the bear climbs this ladder of progression and ends up becoming more bold in its search for food in these human dominated landscapes. So the bears willing to do more risky behaviors to acquire that food, even when there are humans around. And ultimately, this uh, ends up being a human food conditioned bear. So we know that this bear is going to look for, for human habitats because it knows that where there are people, there's good food and it's usually free. And this is always bad for bears and it's always bad for people that have to live around these bears, right? These bears will start doing risky behaviors like trying to enter buildings and trying to enter homes, uh, which ultimately leads to TPWD having to make some kind of decision on what's going to happen to that bear. And in a lot of cases, a fed bear can become a dead bear. When wildlife is repeatedly fed, and especially wildlife that's large like black bears, uh, they can become very bold and very brave in the decisions that they make around humans. And in a lot of places, it's actually illegal to feed wildlife. Uh, here, all we can really do is advise you to be very knowledgeable about the wildlife that you're trying to feed, when you're trying to feed them, and how you're trying to feed them, so that we can restrict black bear access to any of those really great high calorie food sources whenever we can.
So I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys six easy habit changes that you can make at home to prevent human-bear conflicts. These are gonna be things that you can do to minimize the chances of attracting a bear to your house. Um, we're gonna go through each of these things one by one, but the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is try to secure your garbage, secure your wildlife feed, secure your pet and livestock feed, make sure you keep outdoor, cleaning and, or outdoor cooking areas clean, and you're gonna to wanna to secure your small livestock, and finally, you're gonna to wanna to report your bear sightings to the appropriate authorities. All right, so the first thing that you can do is to keep your garbage secure. So the main thing that we recommend you doing is keeping your garbage in an inaccessible area until the day of pickup. If you can, you can put your garbage in a shed, in the garage, in a closed barn. If you can't do something like that, you can actually buy uh, bear, bear proof garbage um, carts. So not like a huge bear proof dumpster, but a secured cart where it's harder for a bear to open that or break into it. But we do suggest never putting your garbage out the night before pickup. Always wait until you know the truck's gonna come pick up this day and you're gonna have a shorter period of time where the bear has the opportunity to get into your garbage. Also, you can use a bear-proof garbage uh, dumpster, which that's gonna be dependent up upon your garbage service provider. So there are several styles of those available, but there are a couple important features of a bear-proof dumpster. The first is that they always have a metal body. So you can see on this one here that this bear is trying to get into this metal dumpster, which also has a metal lid. And in some cases, you can have just a reinforced plastic lid. And it also has some secure clips, latches, or lock bars. But it's also important to note that if you don't use your secure clips or, or lock bars, the bear-proof trash can is, is no longer bear-proof. So it really takes a little bit more effort and it takes community effort on everybody's part to ensure that the bear-proof dumpsters are used appropriately. You're gonna have to ask your service provider to bring bear-proof dumpsters to your community. So it's a, always a great idea to reach out to them, whoever you can get in touch with, with your uh, garbage company and try to kind of push them. You can get the community rally together and try to push them to bring bear-proof dumpsters. If you're unable to get a bear-proof dumpster, you can make some modifications to uh, your existing dumpsters. You, again, should probably contact your trash service provider and ensure that they will continue to service that dumpster after you do something to it. But uh, you can scan this QR code here, and this will give you a couple of ideas on things that you can do to your existing dumpsters to make them safer for bears. Uh, things like using a plywood lid with chains to prevent bears from falling through the top of a plastic lidded dumpster. You can put metal reinforcement under the lid of plastic lidded dumpsters. Or you can modify the lock bar so that it holds the plastic lid down. So the second important thing that you can do is secure wildlife feed. A lot of people uh, you know, like to feed wildlife near their home, whether that's bird feeders or small tripod feeders. But it's important to realize that bears can't tell the difference between food that's been set out for deer or raccoons or foxes or birds and food that you've set out for bears. They just realize that that smells really great and they're gonna come participate in the wildlife feeding activity that you've set up for them. Uh, so one important thing you can do is take down bird feeders when bears are active, especially at night. That's, that's including uh, hummingbird feeders. A lot of people don't realize that a single, you know, average size bird feeder full of black oil sunflower seeds can provide all of a bear's caloric needs in a day of hyperphagia. They're, they're really great sources of calories. So here's a little bit of evidence of black bears being very attracted to wildlife feeders. You can see these three guys here just hanging out and having a picnic with a whole lot of protein feed on the ground. And as we know, or as we heard from Dana earlier, bears can smell these things from up to two miles away. So they're gonna be drawn to these types of resources. So if you're planning on setting up a protein feeder or something like that for deer, um, you wanna make sure that this is in a remote place where you're able and willing to allow bears to come, or you need to secure it in some way. And Austin will talk about ways to do that later. So here again are some bears hanging out, enjoying some bird seed. Uh, as you can see, this guy has almost finished the bird, 
the bird feeder full of sunflower seeds and went ahead and grabbed some suet cake and he's gonna hang out and eat that too. And it may seem cute as, at first. If you see you know, a young bear hanging out eating your bird seed, you may think that's just harmless. But that bear has now learned that he can come back to your house where there's people and get a free meal. So the next time that he is hungry, he'll come back seeking the same type of opportunity and may show up at your house or your neighbor's house. Uh, and that's just starting, you know, that first rung on the ladder. So we want to stop them as early as we can so their behavior doesn't progress. One way that you can protect your bird feeders or other areas that are not easy to lock or latch is by using unwelcome mats. So unwelcome mats have very broad applications. You can set them under things like this one is right here. Or you can create them in different shapes to put them in front of doors or windows or other areas where bears may try to get in. Basically, it's a surface that's spiked with nails. Um, this one is a horse stall mat. And you basically just, we used a nail gun and we shot nails into the bottom of it and then you flipped it upside down and you've made a very painful doormat. So whenever bears try to walk on this, not only is it uncomfortable, but it also makes it very difficult for them to stand stably on the surface. So they don't have the ability to use their, their forearms to force or to grab most things. And as you can see in this picture right here, the bear would have to be standing on that unwelcome mat to be able to reach that bucket of bird seed. So you can be creative in the way that you use it, but you have to kind of think like a bear and illustrate where they would stand and how they would need to act in order to reach that attractant. Here's a picture of an unwelcome mat that's made out of plywood, uh, and this one's being used to prevent a bear from accessing this, this structure right here. So the third thing that you can do when you're trying to prevent bears from you know, creating bears from being around your home is to secure pet and livestock feed. It's advisable to keep your feed in a secure container and also in an area inaccessible to bears. So it's probably not a great idea to have just a whole stack of horse feed, for example, in your barn. If you're able to store that in a more secure area, uh, that would be a lot better. Um, there's plenty of other containers that can be used. For example, we assisted a local landowner out here in moving their stash of feed to a horse trailer where a bear is not able to access it. So you can think outside the box and be a little more creative about that. Uh, you don't always have to, you know, to build a brand new barn or something with lock and key to keep a bear out of it. Also, you wanna make sure not to leave used food bowls or uneaten feed outside of your home. Essentially, if you are going to feed your pet, like on your back patio, for example, even though your dog may have eaten all that food in about 10 seconds, the smell is still there. So bears can still smell that. They're still going to come to your house looking for that free food, especially if you've left out a dirty dog bowl. So our best advice is to feed your animals indoors if possible. If you can't do that, please don't leave food out on your patio or dirty bowls on your patio. Just feed the exact amount that the animal's going to eat and pick up the bowl after they're done and clean it. Bears are perfectly capable of taking your entire stash of livestock feed. So you can see in this picture here on the left that he's taken at least two or three bags of 50 pound feed out to a pasture and attempted to bury it so he can snack on it later. Um, and here you can see on the right a bear that has collect is t looks like he's taken out some dog food. So they, they really are capable of carrying those things and that is a lot of calories and that's very smelly food so that's high attractant for them. If we're able to prevent them from accessing them in the first place that really work out in their favor and ours. All right. So next you wanna make sure that if you're using an outdoor kitchen or a grill or cooking outdoors that you keep those areas clean. Uh, we suggest that as soon as you're done cooking, go ahead and clean that area up. Don't you know, be hanging out of the barbecue pit, make yourself some steaks and then go inside for the rest of the night and maybe come back out and clean it around noon tomorrow. You wanna go ahead and do your best to get that area as clean as possible as soon as you're done cooking. Uh, that includes making sure that you don't dispose of waste, such as meat scraps or cooking oil, near your home or outdoors. Uh, and you also want to make sure to not clean and store pots or pans or cooking utensils outside. Go ahead and pick those things up and store them inside if possible. And if you have a garage or a shed or somewhere where you can take your uh, grill and go ahead and store it in there, 
that would be the best place for that. One of the last things that you can do is make sure that you've secured your small animals. As Dana mentioned earlier, there's not a lot of incidences of black bears uh, predating upon livestock in Texas. Um, however, animals such as sheep, goats, and chickens can easily become easy prey. So we recommend uh, setting up, for example, a chicken run with a coop, making sure your coop is locked up every night, moving your goats and sheep maybe into a small pen with a barn and ensuring that they're locked up safely at night. And if there are persistent bears in your area, you can consider using an electric fence to keep bears out of your livestock areas. And Austin will talk to us in a little bit about setting up electric fences. Finally, uh, the best, one of the last things that you can do and one of the best things you can do when you see bears is to let folks know. There's three main parties that would really like to be aware of bears in your area. The first is uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife biologists and game wardens. As we talked about earlier, we use these bear reports to under, better understand where bear populations and breeding populations are within the state so that we can better understand how these animals are recolonizing um, and we also use this to inform our decisions on what we may need to do with that bear. For example, the bear here in Terlingua, if we did not receive as many uh, notif notifications about, hey, the bear's in this trash can, or oh my gosh, the bear is over here and he may have almost gotten hit by a car, we would not have been prepared or educated enough to, to make appropriate decisions about that animal. Next, you want to contact your local law enforcement and just let them know that there's a bear, you know, near your house or in your neighborhood. And this is just from a standpoint of human safety, so that if uh, there is, you know, a safety concern, that local law enforcement is available to act. And finally, you want to let your neighbors know about the bear's presence. And that's also to hopefully convince your neighbors to take some steps to prevent bears from, from coming closer to their home and to sort of be more bear wise and it's important to work together to create this sort of bear wise community when you communicate with your neighbors try to encourage them to do some of these six things and to prevent bears from becoming attracted to your home so uh, there's two qr codes up here one of them is to find your local biologist and the other one is to find your game warden uh, if you scan these and you go on our website there's a cell phone number listed for each of us so whether it's 2 a.m. or 2 p.m., if there's a bear at your house, we would definitely like to know. Um, and Krista will be receiving all of our bear reports, so she'll put them in that fancy map that she showed us earlier. <laughs>